WBBM FM, Chicago. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Philip Martin, Johnny. Oh, yeah. How are you, Mr. Martin? Fine. Got an assignment for you. Something interesting? Well, I think you'll like it. Our company insures a Miss Nancy Shaw. That's a familiar name. If you go to the movies, it should be. Oh, that Nancy Shaw? Mm Mm-hmm. She was robbed of 100,000 in jewels. Think you can handle it? Well, I can try. Say, for an assignment like this, I might even consider waiving my expense account. You're kidding. Yeah, I sure am. I'll see you at the office. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. For refreshing taste, plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. When your mouth and throat feel hot and dry, a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you quick, long-lasting refreshment. The lively, full-bodied Spearmint flavor cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The chewing itself helps keep your throat pleasantly moist. Best of all, you can chew and enjoy refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint gum almost any time and any place. Keep a package handy right in your purse or pocket so you can chew a stick whenever you want it. For refreshing taste, plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Millions enjoy it, and you will too. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Columbia All Risk Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Nancy Shaw matter. Expense account item one, $193.80, plane fare and incidentals between Hartford and Los Angeles. I arrived at the International Airport at 11 a.m., hired a car and drove directly to Santa Monica where I registered at a hotel. Shortly after that, I drove to the Santa Monica police station and introduced myself to Sergeant James Dodd. Oh, I've been expecting you. Your company sent a teletype. I understand this isn't the first of this type of robbery. No, I've been three others. Same M.O. Always knows the setup of the house. Goes directly to whatever he or she is after. Why, you think it might be a woman? Uh Uh-uh. But you never know. Each time it's been wealthy families, twice people in the picture business. Here's a list of the articles stolen. Hmm. Quite a list. Any of the stuff shown up yet? Not yet, but it will. Miss Shaw was robbed night before last. Sunday, huh? maid's night out. Each one's been like that. Always the maid's night off. Always the people are out to dinner or something. Whoever it is, very well informed. I've got to run out and talk with Miss Shaw. Nice girl. You'll like her. Malibu, number 915. Straight out the highway, turn in the gates at the colony. I'd better call and tell her you're coming down or you'll never get past the patrol. Patrol? Yeah, the association that protects the homes in the colony. They check everybody that comes in the gates. What about the thief, then? Well, I think he parked on the highway down from the colony, walked down to the beach, and busted in the Shaw place from the back way. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Sergeant. Sure. Anything else? Happy to help out. Took me about half an hour to reach the colony at Malibu, where the patrol at the gate stopped me. Evidently, Miss Shaw had informed them of my coming because they passed me through. I drove slowly down a narrow street fronted on one side by beautiful homes that faced a long, white strip of beach. I was met at the door of number 915 by a maid who showed me through the attractively furnished home to a glassed-in cabana overlooking the ocean. Nancy Shaw, one of the biggest stars at the box office, rose to greet me. She was wearing a white sunsuit, and as she walked toward me, I had the sensation my hair had caught on fire. Mr. Dollar? Yeah. Uh, how do you do, Miss Shaw? Sergeant Dodd called, said you were coming down. I, uh, just left him. Nice cop. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. I'll, uh, try. Something wrong? It's a little warm. How about a drink? Fine, fine. Bernice? 
What'll it be? Anything with a thermostat in it. Gin and tonic? That'll do it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Bernice, bring Mr. Dollar a gin and tonic, and I'll have the same. Yes, ma'am. It's a wonderful house. Thank you. I wouldn't live anywhere else. But isn't it quite a drive to the studio? Oh, well, when I'm working, I'm generally up around six. Hardly any traffic. I get there in 25 minutes. Cigarette? No, thanks. Tell me about your work, Mr. Dollar. Well, there's not much to tell. I'm a freelance investigator. Insurance company's got a job. They call me and... And you investigate. That's about it. Like your work? Well, it has its compensations. For instance? Well, for instance, Nancy Shaw in a sunsuit. Well, thank you. It says on your insurance report that you've never been married. Is that so unusual? In your case, I'd say it was. I've come close. What changed your mind? Men. Oh, sorry I mentioned it. Oh, I'm not. I think men are wonderful. But marriage isn't? Under the right circumstances, it's great. You married, Mr. Dollar? Uh-uh. Why not? Let's talk about the jewels that were stolen, huh? <laughs> All right. Have the police found out anything? No, not much. Oh. Michelle? Oh, yes, Bernice? Mr. Asher just called. Say he was on his way down. Oh, thank you. Uh, tell the gate man to let him in, huh? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. The patrol at the gate isn't generally this cautious, but since the robbery, they're checking everyone. According to my report, you were robbed of a ruby pin, two diamond rings, a pearl choker, four gold bracelets, two diamond watches, three... Well, here's the list. Hmm. Is it correct? Yes. Yes, that's correct. The items were stolen night before last. Yes. Mr. Dollar. Yeah? Do you have to ask me a lot of questions? Well, it's the usual procedure. If you're expecting company or something, I can come back some other oh, time. Oh, no, no, no. I, uh... I just thought, as long as we've got to spend some time together, we might as well be comfortable. We can go out and sit on the beach. Well, that sounds fine, but, uh... Don't you like the beach? Oh, I love it, but I'm not exactly dressed. Oh, there's plenty of trunks in the guest house. Should be some your size. I met her on the beach. She changed from the sun suit to a red bathing suit. She was stretched out in the sand, her face turned up to the sun, and her blonde hair spread out around her shoulders. Hi. Hi. Here. Spread out this towel. Get yourself some sun. Okay. You're a little white. More of a pearl gray, I'd say. <laughs> ah. Hmm. Trunks look fine. I hunted high and low for a pail and a shovel. Gonna dig in the sand? I don't think I've been out on the beach like this since I was eight. I had a pail and shovel then. Seemed only fitting and proper. <laughs> Might be fun at that. Oh, sure. Didn't you used to build castles with moats around them? Let the ocean come in and fill them up? No, I didn't get to the beach much before I came to California. Then I was a little old for building castles. Oh, you're never too old to build castles. But then there's always some guy who comes along, you know, running as though he was in training for a four-minute mile. Never sees your castle and plump. Runs right over it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've had it happen. But you said you never built castles. Not in the sand. But I've built them. And they've got stepped on. You can always build another. I did. Another. And another. And now you're living in one. A big, beautiful one. Right on the beach. Mm-hmm. What's your castle look like, Mr. Dollar? Oh, I design all kinds. Sometime when I've got a pail and a shovel, I'll show you. And the name is Johnny. All right, Johnny. Sometime you build me a castle. Sure. Hey, you've got a visitor. Huh? Guy just came out of your house. He's headed this way. Tall, dark, looks like an ad for strength and health. Exactly. Hmm. Dave Asher. Old friend? Nope. We're engaged. Oh. Hello, Dave. Didn't Bernice tell you I was coming down? Yes, she told me. This is Mr. Dollar. How do you do? This is Dave Asher, Mr. Dollar. He's happy to meet you. 
Really? Ah, oh, don't sulk, Dave. Tell Mr. Dolly you're happy to meet him. Why? Because it's too nice a day to put up with one of your moods. Is this guy the reason you haven't been available for the last few days? I only met Mr. Dollar an hour ago. Then you won't miss him. Goodbye, Mr. Dollar. Goodbye. Have a nice trip. I don't think you get the point. Oh, sure I do. You're unhappy, so you're leaving. Mr. Dollar, maybe you don't know it, but Miss Shaw and I are engaged. I know it. Dave, for once in your life, try to act I drove like... all the way down here to see you. I haven't seen you since Sunday night, and there's a few things I like to settle. In private. Now, maybe you get the point, Mr. Dollar. I'm not leaving. You are. Oh, now, this is really too no, much. No, wait a minute. Maybe I'd better you go. You stay right where you are, Johnny. Oh. Oh, it's Johnny. Yes, it's Johnny. My family thought it up. You're a pretty funny man, huh? Now, you listen to me. You just go right back out to your car and drive yourself away from me. I'm not leaving until he does. I beg your pardon. You're leaving, and you're leaving right now. Now, turn around. You're serious? I was never more serious in my life. Now, get off the beach. We're through. Fine. Hi. I'm sorry, Johnny. Cigarette? Thanks. It's rather... It's rather unpleasant. You want to borrow my shoulder? Oh, it's been coming to this for a long time. I don't know why I didn't stop seeing him sooner, except that I... Really didn't know him for the first few months. You know, party manners, impress the lady with a well-oiled line. I guess I was being as insincere as he was. This is a town for insincerity, Johnny. It's like the first house I bought. Beautiful. Lived in it for six months before I discovered the termites had eaten away half the foundation. Who is he? Well, just a rich young man. Spoiled disposition. He was with you the... The night you were robbed? Yes. Mm -hmm. We had a big fight. He took me home. It was over then. I knew it. And I have to admit I was a little dewy-eyed over having made one more mistake. <laughs> and when I discovered the jewelry was missing, I... it was just too much. I must have cried for two whole hours. I have to go to a party tonight, Johnny. Dave and I were invited. What will I do? Have a headache? Well, that's too easy. He'll be there with someone. What are you doing tonight, Johnny? No plans. Will you take me to the party? Gonna show him you don't care, huh? I don't want to show him anything. I'd like to show myself. I play a lousy second fiddle. You don't have to play anything. Just take me to the party. When you get bored, say good night. Friends, no matter what kind of work you do, it's a real help to chew delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum right while you're working. When you're warm or tired, for instance, the lively, full-bodied spearmint flavor is really refreshing. It helps keep your mouth and throat feeling cool and moist. Chewing on that smooth, good-tasting piece of Wrigley Spearmint makes the time pass more pleasantly, too. It seems to make your work go smoother and easier. Keep a package or two of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum handy all the time. Enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint while you're working and at other times. That's Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. I guess it wasn't a very big party by Hollywood standards, but it frightened me. About 150 guests, producers, stars, and some odds and ends that always show up at a party like that. Dave Asher was there, guzzling champagne as though the Texas drought had hit Beverly Hills. About midnight, the party was under full steam, and Nancy led me outside, where a long walk stretched out over half an acre of lawns and wound around a big lighted swimming pool. Having fun? Well, I'm a little out of my element. I thought being together might make the difference. Being with you is the nicest thing that's happened in a long, long time. 
But I'd rather be sitting on the beach. Yes. That would be nice. Johnny? Hmm? Kiss me. Well. What was that for? Does it have to be for something? Well, doesn't it? I guess so. I wanted you to kiss me. I thought it might be nice. It was. Let's get out of here. All right. Well, 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 well. Hello, Dave. Goodbye, Dave. Going someplace? Yes, we were. Why don't you be a good boy I want boy to and... talk to you, funny man. Dave, please. Let him get it off his chest. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for one to get something off one's chest. Right? If you say so. I do. I do. I say so. Johnny. It's all right. Sure, Nancy, it's all right. Funny man can handle himself. Catch a funny man. Look, Sonny. Whatever it is you've got to say, say it and get out of my way. I don't like you. Great. I'd hate to be your first friend. And I don't care much for your date, the little glamour gal. Big movie star, Miss Nancy Shaw. Be careful. Yeah? Please, Johnny. Okay. Get out of my way, Mr. Asher. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, then it's about time you got your first lesson. Occasionally, you're bound to run into guys like me. And what do I learn? To wish you hadn't. <laughs> Can he swim? Like a fish. Let's go sit on the beach. Let's. We left while young Asher was pulling himself out of the pool and drove back to the beach. Turned out to be a lovely evening after all. We sat on the beach and talked about things until we couldn't think of anything else to say. I left as the sun was rising behind the Malibu hills and drove back to the hotel and crawled into bed. I'd promised to see Nancy for dinner, so I set the alarm and fell asleep. It was about four in the afternoon when the phone rang. Johnny Dollar. This is Sergeant Dodd. Oh, oh, how are you? I was just catching a little snooze. You have a big night last night? Well, I don't know. Nothing special. Why? You made the papers, front page. Huh? Yeah. It says here you knocked some young socialite into a swimming pool. Oh, I better get up. Anything new on the case? No, I thought maybe you might have something. What do you know about this guy you belted last night? He didn't drown, did he? No, but we've been doing some checking on him. Any particular reason? Well, we're checking everyone that's even remotely connected with Miss Shaw or any of the others who've been robbed. Well, all I know is that he used to be engaged in that to, uh, to Miss Shaw. His name is Asher. Dave Asher. And, oh, yeah, she said he's got a lot of money. Oil wells. Yeah. Not a one. What do you mean? I mean, he looks like a phony. Nobody's ever heard of him. He's certainly not in oil. Does he have money? Yeah, but not as much as he pretends. Three months ago, he didn't even have a bank account, and he was living in a $7 a week room. Huh. Just thought you might be able to tell me something more. No, I can't. But I'll see what I can find out. Okay. Give my regards to Miss Shaw. I'll do that. Seems like a real nice girl. Yeah. <laughs> A half hour later, I pulled up to the beach house, got out, went down the steps to the front door and rang the bell. It had been a long time since I'd felt like that. I was really looking forward to seeing her again. Oh, Miss Shaw isn't in, Mr. Dollars. Well, she's expecting me. She, Miss Shaw isn't seen anyone for the next few days. She told me to tell you she was sorry. Now, wait a minute. Please, Mr. Dollars. What's the matter with you? What's wrong? There's nothing wrong, sir. Please, let me close the door. Your apron's torn. You've been crying. What's happened, Bernice? Nothing. Then I'll find out for myself. Nancy! 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 Nancy, are you in there? Johnny. Open the door. Please, go away. I can't see you. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. I'll, I'll call you. Open the door. Oh, please, John. Nancy! Go away. Are you going to open the door or do I break it in? John, I didn't want to see you. I didn't want any more trouble. Honey, 
Who did it? Oh, please. Please don't do anything. Don't say anything about it, please. The publicity would be awful. Come on. Sit down. Oh. oh. Have you seen a doctor? No. Bernice called him. He should be here any minute. He won't say anything. Who did it? Oh, Johnny, please forget it. Asher. Please, please. All right. Come on. You stretch out. Oh. You got any sleeping pills or anything? It's in the cabinet. <laughs> Here, take a couple. Come on. Now you just relax till the doctor gets here. You'll be all right. All right. You just take it easy. Okay? Okay. Is she all right, Mr. Dollars? Who beat her up? Was it Mr. Asher? Yes. Yes, he got here about an hour ago. I tried to stop and he hit me. He was crazy. He kept huh. hitting her. I found this on the floor after he left. Huh. Quite a diamond. Yes, sir. Hard cut. About two carats. He yelled, screamed like he was crazy. He was just terrible. Is she all right? Yeah, yeah. I want to use the phone. Yes, sir. I didn't want to keep you out, Mr. Dallas. But Miss Shaw was scared you'd do something. Somebody's got to do something, Bernice. You going to call the police? Yeah. I guess you have to. City Hall. Sergeant Dodd, please. Thank you. Robbery, Sergeant Dodd. This is Johnny Dollar. Oh, yeah. You got that list of stolen goods handy? Oh, right in front of me. Why? Check it and see if there's a two-carat diamond. Oval, pretty deep. Wait a minute. Bernice. Yes, sir? You know those people that have been robbed in the last three months? Yes, sir. Miss Shaw and me were just talking about it this morning. Were they all friends of Miss Shaw's? Yes, sir. Miss Shaw was saying how funny Johnny? it was. Wait a minute, Bernice. Yeah, Sergeant? There's no single stone on the list, but there's a ring, platinum setting with two small rubies, square cut on the side, and a two-carat diamond that fits the description. Oval, deep. Yeah. Look, Dodd, Dave Asher just beat up Miss Shaw. She's a mess. Doctor's on his way over now. Wait a minute. Bernice, what were you going to say? You said that Miss Shaw... She said how fun it was that all the people who were robbed, that she was over there to their house just before it happened. Dodd. Yeah? I think Asher's our boy. I think he went to those houses with Miss Shaw and cased them good. Found out what night the maid was off and anything else that might happen. Okay, but how about Miss Shaw's house? Asher was with her the night of the robbery. Then he's working with someone. He gets the layout, someone else does the job. Well, we can certainly run over and pick him up. Get him on an assault charge anyway. Yeah. I want to see Mr. Asher again. <laughs> Sergeant Dodd gave me Asher's address in Santa Monica Canyon and said he'd meet me there. I looked in on Nancy, who was getting drowsy. Then I told Bernice I'd check back to see what the doctor's report would be and then left for Asher's place. Yeah? Get up. I said get up! Let me go. You're out of shape, Dave. You should train on men for a while. You broke my nose. You're lucky. Now, where did you get this ring? Where did you get it? I... I bought it. Where? From a guy. What guy? Just a guy. I don't know him. He, he wanted to sell it, and I bought it. Is there anything the matter with that? Yeah, you're lying. Now, listen to me. I want some answers. First, where did you get this ring? I told you. Can you hear me? Yeah. You've been going to parties with Miss Shaw, casing the house, and someone else has been doing the jobs. Right? Okay. Hey, no, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a, wait a minute. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Who are you working with? 
Name's Fisher. Stanley Fisher. Where is he? He, uh, he lives at the Shelton Hotel on Ocean Drive. Where's the loot? He's got it. Why did you beat up Miss Shaw? I don't know. I, I just got mad. I don't know why you, why I did it. Don't you ever do anything and, and you don't know why? Oh, yeah, sure. But this isn't one of those times. Well, I guess I should have knocked. Oh, hello, Sergeant. He's your man, all right. I heard. Works with some guy named Stanley Fisher. Yeah, we know him. Small-time thief. I'll have him picked up. I'm sorry about the mess. Asher and I had a slight difference of opinion. <laughs> Forget it. Why don't you get back to the beach and see how Miss Shaw's doing? I'll take care of things here. Thanks. Miss Shaw was fine. Took her a few days to get up and around. So naturally, I stayed in town until Dodd put the finishing touches on the case. Then I went down to the beach and gave her a full report. And now you've got to leave. I'm afraid so. I don't particularly want to. I guess it's better. Why? I don't know. Do you? Sure. So I can come back. Will you? The next time my expense account brings me to California. I will personally rob every house in the neighborhood. You do that. Well, I've got to catch a plane. Johnny, come here. Nancy. Huh? Are you sure my hair isn't on fire? Well, that was that. Expense account item two, $115. Hotel bill and incidentals. Items three and four, $295.85. Car rental, plane fare, and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $604.65. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, for refreshing taste plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The taste of fresh spearmint is cooling and delightful. And there's lots of it in every stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. It freshens your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and sweetens your breath besides. You'll enjoy the good chewing, too, because Wrigley's Spearmint is so smooth and pleasant to chew on. There's nothing else quite like it. Next time you're at the store, stop at your friendly merchant's display of chewing gum and get a few packages of good-tasting Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Always keep some handy for refreshing taste plus chewing enjoyment. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Mary Jane Croft, Thelma Johnson, Peter Leeds, and Vic Perrin. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when, from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>